to sell her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power, can sell her to another strange nation, saying he have dealt deceitfully with her, can sell our women to another strange nation, is told. And if he have betrothed her unto a son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters, after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, right? This is the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, he cannot diminish her food or her raiment and her duty of marriage. If he take another wife, you still got to maintain those things. You can't take away from the household for another household. What are you saying? That's evil. That's wrong. So going back to uh, 1 Corinthians 7, chapter, verse 4. The wife has not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. You mean, I'm not giving you none tonight. Or get an attitude and, you know, withhold yourself from your husband. Or withhold yourself from your wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. So you got to consent with each other to make sure that it's okay with each other. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, you see? So when you fasting and praying, you're not supposed to be indulging in sexual intercourse. If you want to do it right. <laughs> Like it says, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again. Got to come together again. What you mean? I come, we see that come together again means have sexual intercourse again that Shatan tempt you not for your incontinency. Now, it's very clear here that when you come together, that's what brings forth the marriage is Sexual intercourse, that, that constitutes marriage. Even if in Esau's kingdom, if you don't um, let's say you got married today and you go on your honeymoon and you never really lay with this woman and then y'all don't get along and there's an arguing and then next thing you know you don't have sex with her, so you can have that annulled. Even in Esau's kingdom. The judge will say, did you have sex with her? No, we didn't do anything. Okay, oh no. Because sexual intercourse constitutes and it consummates the marriage. They even operate under that. Look at marriage, and I'm going to look at it up in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Marriage is an intimate personal union to which a man and woman consent. So therefore, understand this, women. You got to consent to being married. The man got to consent to being married. That's marriage. Consummated and continually nourished by sexual intercourse. Consummated and continually, continuously nourished by sexual intercourse and perfected in a lifelong partnership of mutual love and commitment. So they even know that. They might not teach it, but that's what's written. And so you're not supposed to defraud each other unless Satan come in. That's where you're going to allow him to come in. Verse 6, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment, he said. He said he's speaking this by permission and not of commandment. It's very important that you see this because, but he, like he said, he said he believed that he operated in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Most High, he wrote most of the New Testament.
verse 7, For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of the Most High, one after this matter, and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. That's why he said the first verse. Now concerning the things well ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Verse 9. That's why he said he would like for those who abide as he was. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. It is better to marry, have a man or have a woman than to burn. And unto the Mary I command, yet not I, but the Most High. Who the Most High ordained? Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. So it means a woman's supposed to be staying with her man or be reconciled back to him, if at all possible. There are conditions where you just can't be with him. But to the rest speak I, not the most high. So this is what he's speaking as him being filled with the Holy Spirit by permission. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And a woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So if you have a woman that she like you, she love you, and she be well pleased to be with you, don't put her away. And a woman, she have a man that believe not, but he love you. And it goes deep because you got to really learn what's love. You got to become mature in love also. Don't put her away. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy, because someone has to hold it down. But if the unbelieving depart, if they leave, a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But the Most High have called us to peace. And a lot of times when they do leave, it's, it's a problem like that. You will have peace. Definitely. Because there has to be something that's not peaceful while they leave. But you say you're going to have peace. You say you're not under bondage. If they leave and they're unbelieving, that's what I said. You, you have... Uh, you know, build someone that's an unbeliever and they leave and you're not in bondage. Read it again, verse 15, very clear. It says, but if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But the Most High have called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? For how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? You're going to be you gonna be able to make that judgment seat that Amashiach Yahushai is going to give from the Most High? I don't think so. But as the Most High has distributed to every man, as the Most High has called everyone, so let him walk. And so it dang I in all churches. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting. What's your question? Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Uh, the unbelieving, the definition of an unbelieving spouse, would that be um, a spouse? Mm -hmm. Or 
It depends. Like, like you know, you're saying Christian, but those are things that came, that's come that came from pagan. That's that's like really in essence when you look when you go deep into Christian, it's dealing with paganism. You know, it's not really dealing with the truth. You know what I mean? Because you know what I mean. You're not. That's unbelieving because you're caught up in a religion. Most high like, don't give us religion. And most Christians have a religion that they believe in. That's why they ask us, what religion is this? This is a way of life. You know, we have rules and regulations, the law, sets commandments of the most high. That's what we go by. As we're reading, you know, it's like unbelieving is, you say, we the Israelites. No, I'm a Gentile. <laughs> you know, we're not under the law. We're no mercy and grace. So how you believe in the most high when you say you're not under the law? Those are his laws. You know, so that's unbelieving. There's many ways when you look at, you know, how when you say Christian, certain things come to mind because that comes from uh, a deity that they were following and they called themselves that name and then they call the brothers in Antioch, they called them Christians to be like them, just like they want us to be like them now. Nothing new under the sun. But you can't show nowhere where they said they were Christians. They were, you know, they followed some type of religion. All these things are new. These things are new that came up. You know what I mean? You look at all these different religions and so forth that we, that our people believe in now. All this is new. It had a certain date that it started. Go back to the beginning and show me the Baptist church, Catholic church, Church of God in Christ, Jehovah's Witness, you know, on and on. Seventh day Adventist. Was Moses dealing with that? You know, Adam knew about that. Adam had the laws. So, I mean, you know, these are things that came up newly up. Guys that came up newly up that it tells you that we didn't know anything about of our past. So that's unbelieving. Yes, it's true. It's truly unbelieving. Yeah, that's uh, what he's saying. Yeah, yeah the most I have called us to was. peace. Hmm? See, I thought I was. Uh, because of being raised in error as a Christian, I thought that when he left or we divorced, then I could not remarry because I was still bound to him as a Christian. So, this is <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, if you look at it for real, you're looking at it. What is it that really is makes him a believer? Not, you know, But they don't follow the law. They ain't under the law. I, I know, you know. So for, I, you know, I could have remarried years ago and still been under the law. Because I thought I couldn't. Well, I mean, wow. it is what it is. You know, we live and learn. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. That's what it's all about. You know, just trying to uh, come out of. That's what I keep saying. We've been brain polluted. By the minds of the Gentiles, they never gonna know the way to the Most High ever. So that's what's very important here, you know. And you know, it's because it's conditioned, even with those that uh, that do know, you know what I mean? Because those are the unbelieving that he's saying. Remember, he spoke just by permission, and not of the Most High also. And he, and he said. They say you're not you're not held in the bondage in such case. Most I called you under peace. You should feel peace right now. See, I mean, that's what this is all about, you know. First uh, Corinthians fourteen thirty three. For the Most High is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches are the saints. So. 
continues I because it does um uh, uh Because it goes up into, uh, it says in verse 27, it says, Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. But if thou marry, thou shalt not, thou have not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. Because of the world that we're in, especially now. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. The time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. What's that talking about? Because there's so much work that needs to be done. Say that those that have wives be as though they had none. Because they got to do this work. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fast of this world passes away. But I have you without carefulness. This world is going to be done away with. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Most High. How he may please the Most High. So he that's unmarried care about the things that he might please the most high but he that is married care for the things that are of the world how he may please his wife there's a difference also between a wife and a virgin the unmarried woman quite care for the things of the most high because she had a time to devote spiritually unto her relationship with the most high that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she that is married care for the things of the world how she may please her husband. That's what she's supposed to be doing. Care for the things of the world. Like we just read about a virtuous woman that's going to make a man's life double. She care about the things that she may please her husband. See, on this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, which is beautiful, and that ye may attend unto the Most High without distraction. But if any man think that he behaved himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He said, if not, let them marry, meaning he can, he can have intercourse with her and be, let her become his wife. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, and he ain't burning, ain't lusting for a woman, but have power over his own will, and have so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, do it well. He don't touch her. So then he that giveth her in marriage, do it well. But he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Hmm. Pretty deep. <laughs> so if you maintain yourself, you're going to do well. You're going to do better if you maintain yourself. You're going to do all right, he said, if you do lay with her, but you're going to do better if you maintain yourself. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is not at liberty to be married. She is, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only by Shema Mashiach Yahushua. But she is happier if she so abide. After my judgment. And I think also that I have the spirit of the Most High. That's what he said. So...